God bless you. On behalf of the Love Your Neighbor Coalition, I'm glad to be here at the United Methodist Church Convention here in Tampa, Florida. My name is Pastor Joseph Tolton. It's my pleasure to be joined by this distinguished man, Pastor Carlos Ososo, who is the Conference Secretary for the East Africa Annual Conference, and he's the District Supervisor of Nairobi, Kenya. God bless you, Pastor Carlos bless Ososo. Amen. Blessings to you. Yes. You've come all the way from Kenya. Yes. You shared with me your journey through Istanbul. Yeah, I went to <laughs> Istanbul. And then New York, and then here yeah, in Tampa. Tampa. Yeah. A long journey. A long journey. And you, you took that journey to be here, and what was your heart expecting to receive? Mm, I took that journey to be here because uh, the United Methodist Church meets quadrennially yes. uh, to make some legislations yes. and on issues that are affecting the church. And uh, as a superintendent in Nairobi, and as a conference secretary in, uh, in East Africa, I needed to be uh, knowledgeable of the issues yes. of the church and the direction of the church Amen. in which I'm involved. Absolutely. Mm. We have heard a lot about the decline of the church in the West and the growth of the church in Africa. Yes. Share with us, what is God doing in the United Methodist Church in Kenya? Mm. In Kenya, in fact, uh, yesterday when I was in the conference, I heard that there is the decline of the church membership in the in the West, yes. and that it dismayed me because in Africa and particularly Kenya, the churches are blooming. There, yes. people are coming in the church. They have a hunger yes. to come and listen from what God, the direction of the, the, the people in God. So that when you speak of the church is declining here, it, it, it dismays me. Yes. 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 Are there any particular things happening in Kenya that you would want to lift up for your the audience here in the United States? Any specific things that you all are working on around economic okay. development or spiritual growth? Yeah, the church, uh, we, the United Methodist Church uh, operates in uh, three dimensions, yes. uh, holistically. It, it is a spiritual church, it is a social church, and it is also a mental church. Yes. The, all those programs are in the church in, in East Africa and in, particularly in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, uh, many people come to the church because they know the church is an answer. God is, has yes. got reason for them to exist. Amen. So if it is spiritually, they have to come and consult from God. Yes. If it is socially, they have to come and consult from God. If there is any, uh, the, the desire to learn or knowledge, to gain knowledge, they have to come to discern or to, to, to desire from God. So that's why the churches are focal points yes. uh, of where people come to seek the direction of their life. Amen. And uh, they don't expect that they, 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 the church is a full solution, but they come seeking the mind of God in the church yes. because that is the place where God has bestowed or has put his knowledge to anointed people yes. to lead the mankind in, in, in East Africa and in Africa as a yes. whole. Yeah. Yes. And so uh, the drive of the spirit, the spirit of God, is a main focal point I see in East Africa and particularly Kenya because people are dependent on the direction of God. They seek God and ask God, what do we do in this matter? Yes. And God tells them, do it this way, yes. do it this way, because it's contained in the, the Bible, yes. in the Holy Book. Yes. So they believe, so they are ma mainly motivated by their faith, their belief, because President of this country? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you will edit it, my brother. You will let, yeah, you will edit it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, but in, in Kenya we have such. <laughs> yeah. Will you restart? Yeah, we'll just just that last question. Yeah.
Why yeah. do we, you asked the question. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The life of the church in Africa is very vibrant. Yes. And the church in Africa is growing. Exactly. And tell us why you believe the church is growing in Africa. Like I was telling you, I told you that the church, God, when he, God created man, he gave him a direction. Yes. And the voice of God, because God is in the situation, in the events of life, particularly the people of Africa, believe that the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit yes. leads the life or their life, social life, spiritual life, mental life, and strong belief, strong character. Amen. So what people believe is what they become. Amen. And they believe that they are dependent on the Holy Spirit. Yes. They are dependent on God. Yes. They have never put, they don't use their ego. Like some, mm. some people say, ego stands for age, God, out. Yes, yes. So when they age God out of their life, yes. then they are left to, to, to go it their own way yes. and it becomes difficult. But when they include the Holy Spirit, yes. the Holy Spirit is Jesus in them. That's right. He's Emmanuel in their That's life. Right. So he's the, he's the one that directs the life of the people Amen. in that country, in Amen. those places. Amen. And that's why you see churches. They, there is a lot of humility and a lot of dependency on the higher being. Yes, uh, absolutely. As an African United Methodist, yeah. do you have a particularly special relationship with the African American segment of the United Methodist Church? Mm, the United Methodist Church is not per se uh, African. It is a connectional church. It's a global church. And uh, being global and being connectional, we interrelate in many issues yes. and many diverse programs. So we, we are not exclusive. Yes. The Americans, the Haiti, the, the Philippines, yes. the Europeans, the Germans, the Africans, yes. we meet together. Like in this convention, we are here over 900 delegates yes. from the, across the globe. That's right. And therefore, there is a lot of new things we learn from one another. Uh, and we network and make exchange programs. Yeah. Absolutely. Last night, Bishop King preached a marvelous sermon. Exactly. Invite. What was your reflection on that sermon last night? It was very spiritual, Yes. according to my own assessment, because it was not Larry King. It was Jesus in Larry King. He was an ambassador. Because at one point he said, if Jesus were here himself walking in this body, yes. and he we organized a table, would we exclude some people? Yes. He said, all. Because Jesus, according to the sermon of yesterday, Jesus instructed us to go and look for people outside to bring them in. Yes. As opposed to sitting in the church, yes. waiting for people to come in the church. People don't come to the church. According to the Matthew, the Great Commission, yes. we were commissioned to go and look for people outside and bring them to the church. And when we bring them to the church, we bring people of diverse culture, diverse uh, thinking. Yes. They come as they are, yes. to be perfected right in the, in, the, in the sanctuary, to be preached and nurtured yes. and told how to live. Because our God did not leave, create us and leave us in, in, in suspense. Yes. He creates us and he gives us a direction. He's the way, the truth and the life. We can't just live without him. And that's why the sermon of yesterday, to me, it was very meaningful. Uh, in the United Methodist Church, we have, uh, uh, the, 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 the writing is the, the heart, the mind, and open doors. Yes. Open hearts, open minds, open doors. We are not restrictive. Yes. We allow everybody, drunkards, yes. sinners, yes. atheists, yes. anybody yes. is welcome in the church Amen. and when he comes to the church he comes expectant yes he has to humble down and listen from the word of god to shape their life from one sunday to another sunday yes. that's what they normally do Amen. and larry really put it that way in fact the main the main topic of yesterday was invite yes. and i want to repeat we invite people that is the great commission Amen for the transformation of this world. So if this world has to be transformed, 
it has to get the direction in the church and the church should be informative enough to bring people and nurture people Amen. so that in the second coming of Jesus Christ he will come to get an, a, a very informed church a church that he left with instructions this is the way I want this is the way I want and he left it especially in John 13 33 34 he commanded that we love one another yes. for reason that so that the people outside will see us as disciples as followers as witnesses of Christ when we love one another Amen. when we relate to one another yes. when we fellowship with one another yes. irrespective of color yes. creed yes. and any other biases yes. Yes. that's how I took it from Larry yesterday Amen. yeah pastor We've spent time together in Kenya yes. and now here in Tampa. Yeah. And you and I have been able to talk about some of the challenging issues yes. that face the church. Yes. I think that many Americans believe that it is difficult to engage Africans in those challenging yeah. conversations. But, but we've had them and we don't always yeah. agree, yeah. but we agree to love each other and to disagree. Yeah. How is your heart and your mind open to be able to talk about the challenging issues of the church? Like, if any? Like the LGBT issues, issues around human sexuality? You see, uh, me, I'm open in my way of approach to LGBT and uh, sexual orientation in the church. Uh, sins are diverse. And people who come to church, they come when they are unchurched. And when they come, they come the way they are. So we include everybody in the, in the church. Our doors, are op the church doors are open. Those who want to come, come in. Those who want to leave, leave and go. Yes. But we cannot say that we broke other people don't come in and other people come in. We, uh, we, judgment is left to God. Amen. For us, we just bring people in. But when the people come to church, they must be expectant to listen and get the direction. So if a sinner comes, shall I call him a sinner? Okay, they are sinner because without sin, Christ would not have come to die. So if, if sinners come to the church, they must accept to live the sinful life and be sanctified and lead an acceptable life. Yes. Because uh, in, according to Luke 2.52, Jesus grew in stature, in favor with God, yes. and in favor with man. Amen. So when these people come to church, they need to have the favor of God and the favor of man. So be acceptable. Mm. That's the way I understand it. Amen. Mm. Pastor Carlos Oso, so yeah. mm. you are a man of grace. Really. and wisdom Thank you. and I appreciate you so very kindly. Bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen Joseph. Bless you. Amen Joseph. <laughs>